Ish. Yo. Welcome back to the Zone Focus channel. My name is Chris. Thank you again for stopping by. Uh, today, I'm going to be shooting some 4x5 film, some large format film. And uh, this is going to be my first time actually doing this. Uh, I've never shot 4x5 before, never shot large format before. I got a couple of friends of mine that I'm going to go meet up with down in the city. And uh, we rented the studio for the day. Well, not for the day, a couple of hours. So hopefully we can make a couple of shots in the studio and then I think I'm gonna take the four by five outside and try to make some photos outside as well. So let's see what happens. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm ready to do it. Let's do it. Hey, they want to stop. So we made it inside of this studio. This is the studio that we're working with. Uh, luckily, thanks to my friend right here, she's off the camera. But she's the mastermind of this entire thing. She's also the person that's gonna be letting me use her four x five today. I'm excited. Uh, and it's gonna be a good day. 21, 22, 23, 24. 21, 22, 23, 24. Okay. <clears throat> These are my film cases. Holders. Holders. Sorry, I gotta get my lingo right. Film holders. And I'm gonna be shooting some Acros 100. Okay. That's okay, good. I got my test, a test sheet of film. What I'm gonna have to do now is I'm gonna have to load this four by five. Never done this before. So, okay, Reka, what do I need to do first? As long as these, the dots are on the upside. The, the notches are on okay. the top right corner. The notches. That's the emotion side, but it, it should vary from, uh, yeah, this is the emotion side. Okay, so just put this on your right hand. Yeah, right hand. And, and then that's put how it gonna, inside yeah. facing you. Yeah. All right, that should be easy enough. That's, that's not difficult. No, I will like do it like this. I will put it like here. And I will usually like have this inside the dark bag. I'll just oh, this, touch yeah. here and then I'll just slide this here. I will, of course, make sure the the what's that this thing no, no, on my no. yeah on the right side and just pull it down all the way down and make sure that i'll touch here that there's the edge mm, i know? was just about to say that yeah right make here. sure the edge is on underneath the on, yeah the film is underneath that the edge. little rail and then you close here and then you dark side in dark side in and then you you should probably you can't open here and then don't remember to pull this so first you want to compose your shot if everything's good you can start to load it okay once you put the film holder in you know it's lights out and you can't see anything so yeah Frame this before any you proceed. Pull this back and then uh, and then slide yep. the it goes in. So you have to turn the lens off before yeah, you, you do this. You close the uh... <laughs> Alright, so everything's ready. Dark side out. Okay, so that's gonna be the end of this section. We're gonna move this outside because at the moment, uh, our time is running short. We got about an hour left in here and we need to take some more photos. So I can't be doing too much recording because I'm trying to take some photos. So I'll let you guys see the photos that we make, not the four by five. We're gonna wait till the end to see the four by five. Y'all can't see them before I see them. And uh, yeah, see y'all outside. See y'all outside. So this is the new place that we got the setup with. I got the camera set up right here and this is the composition that I'll be shooting. So what I'm going to kind of compose is the train and these buildings in the back. Um, so like I said, I kind of got my con composition set up. I'm going to try to get this train before it moves. I think it's parked so it shouldn't go anywhere. Dark bag doubles as a good dark curtain for your shot as well. All right, so I'm focused on the front of the train. Oh no. 
Oh no, it's moving. Oh no. Didn't work out like I thought it would. The shot is falling apart. It's falling apart. I right, stop it, pet it. I like the composition. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna take this one. 13 seconds. So let's see. Then it'll be F16. Let's open. Now we can close the lens. Yeah, I'm going in. So I'm gonna open the timer on my phone. Dark side is out. Okay, lights red, here we go. 14. All right, Let's see if that worked or not. All right, that's it, four by five, finished. Ooh, okay. So now I'm back at home. Uh, it's been a few days since I actually recorded that last video. These are the images that I took right now. So I made two images that day with the 4x5 using Acros 100 film. Uh, the first one being of my friend inside of the studio. Uh, this was my first 4x5 shot ever. And uh, it was just a portrait just to make sure I had everything correct as far as focusing, framing, and all of that type of stuff. On the digital file, her feet are cut off in the photo, and I think that's my scanning issue or something, I don't know. But on the actual negative, you can still see her feet. So I don't know what that's about. The second photo I made was on the bridge toward the end of the video where um, actually the train had moved when I was trying to make the photo. And so I turned and I went to the other side of the bridge and I took a picture of that restaurant that's right down off the side of the bridge. I do like how that image came out and the amount of detail in it was kind of really cool um, considering I had never really shot a four by five like that in a way that there was a lot of detail in that image, a lot of brick, a lot of stonework and uh, you know, kind of like layers into the city. And the detail is very, very nice. So two things that I learned while shooting the four by five is one, it's a little difficult to compose with the 4x5 just because everything is completely on its head. The image is upside down when you look in the ground glass and also all of your directions are inverted. So if something looks like it's on uh, too far right on the frame, you have to move the camera to the left. You don't move it to the right because it'll just keep going the wrong way. If you've shot a RZ67 or a TLR or anything that you have to look through ground glass, then you kind of understand your left and right being in reverse. But the thing about a 4x5 is that it also flips the image upside down and then your up and down is also in reverse as well. So everything is like you're drunk and you've had way too many and you're trying to walk a straight line and all of your directions are screwed up. So <laughs> that's what this 4x5 is like. But it's cool, once you actually get everything set up and you get it looking nice, I, I really do uh, think that the composing part of the image uh, with the 4x5 is really interesting. I'll be shooting some more with it uh, so I can try to get used to that. Uh, another thing is, is that if you're going to be recording video as you take photos, make sure you record your video after you make your photo because you'll end up like me and whatever you're trying to take a photo of will move out of the frame or something will change and you'll lose your image and it might not ever happen again. Uh, so make sure you take your image first and then you can always come back and you re record video and make it look like you're taking the image again, whatever the case may be. Make your image first. That is the essential thing. A split second in time might not ever happen again and you might not ever see that composition ever again. So take your image first and then the video can come second. With all of that being said, I have another video lined up with the 4x5 and uh, please stick around for that. You can do that by subscribing to the channel. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button. That helps out the video a lot. And then uh, also a uh, notification bell. So when I do release any more videos, you'll be able to see them first. 
Uh, also go over to the Instagram page and follow the Instagram page because I put a lot of behind the scenes stuff and then also photos that I make from here. You can get a good look at it. You can zoom in. You can get a nice detailed look into the images. And uh, you can also communicate with me directly there. All right. So with all of that being said, thank you all for watching. I appreciate every single one of you for sticking around. Stays on focused and I'll holler at you later. Lego.